Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Now, uh, you may remember that uh, that homemade Anun that I showed you the other day, and I said, absolutely bloody hopeless, it's going in the garbage, uh, this thing here. So I've got four of these, um, I've got four of these reasonably uh, um, nice diameter cores from the Hamfest for, for two bucks. And I did, a, I did a couple of tests with it and said it's rubbish, I can see why they were two bucks. And I sort of manipulated these fly leads and it didn't seem to make any difference. So I thought, well I'll just see how it compares with the Ted Emtron uh, 16 to 1. Well it's actually selectable but the 16 to 1 unun. This thing here that I bought some time ago. And I remembered it wasn't too bad, it wasn't particularly flat but you know it was usable. As you can see, that one's 4 to 1, uh, 9 to 1, 16 to 1. So I, I tried it with those, with those fly leads and got a very similar result to what I got with that. And I thought, well, wait a minute, what's the difference? So I remembered that on this one, I used a coaxial cable going from there to the, uh, from there to the, to the antenna analyzer. So I thought, OK, let's just shorten all the leads up. Um, so I shortened the leads up on the actual device itself and there's only two fly leads left and I, I had a little coaxial tail that didn't have a plug on it so I thought that's handy. So uh, a little bit of RG400 here. So I just uh, soldered the end to the 50 ohm side of the Anun. And I got uh, results that were far more useful. Now my high power resistor here is uh, 470 ohms so it's not really spot on but um, it's certainly <laughs> Excuse me, certainly in the ballpark. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Can I prop that up, I wonder? Can we be able to see that? I'll hold it. There we go. It's lifting the blooming thing off the ground. But anyway, so you can see... Uh, little pointing stick. A bit of cable tie here. So hopefully you can see centre frequency is 7.093, so it's on 40 metres. SWR is 1, and the impedance is 45 ohms. So that's on, that's on 40 metres. Now I've got my 470 ohm uh, resistor on the high impedance side of my 9 to 1 Anun. <coughs> so let's see what it's like on 80 metres. And look at that, on 80 metres, 3.6 megahertz. SWR is 1, 1 to 1, 49 ohms. This is much more like it, isn't it? On 1.8 megs, so on top band, as we call it in the UK, uh, SWI is 1 to 1 and 50 ohms. So <clears throat> I've changed my mind, I'm very happy with these cores. Okay, so let's go up to 10 megs, 1.1 and 41, okay, and that's usable. You've got to bear in mind, of course, that the, the impedance connected to the 9 to 1 Anun. <clears throat> The actual antenna load itself uh, is going, the impedance at that point there is going to change from frequency to frequency into band to band. So you know it's, it doesn't, doesn't matter if it's not absolutely spot on. Uh, there's 20 meters. Again, I hope you can see that. I can't see this viewfinder very well, but 14.2, um, 1.3 uh, 1 to 1, 38 ohms. Okay, and work with that. 21 megs, 1.7 and 50. 24 is 2 and 68. It's in higher in frequency it goes, the worse it gets. There's 28.5, it's 2.3 and 83. Now, I did wonder about making another one of these because this is um, this is one mil building wire. I do I do have some one mil enameled wire and some and some 1.25 mil enameled wire. I might even go to get some thicker stuff, but because this is um, because this is made of one mil building wire, you've got the thickness of the insulation, or twice the thickness of the insulation, if you like, between each each wire in the winding. So, if I remade this now that I know this core is actually pretty good, if I remade this by putting some um, I would probably use uh, self-amalgamating tape, there's very thin rubber self-amalgamating tape I can get from a local hardware shop uh, around there, 
put that around the uh, the core, then wind some enamelled wire on it. I think the results would be better, and I think the results at the higher end, uh, frequency wise, would be uh, would be better than I'm seeing here. So that's not. I might even use that in the meantime, just uh, just just for a bit of fun, just to see how it goes. Um, and what it does mean, of course, is that uh, I can I can use those cores for what I had in mind. I did I did wonder about making one of these. I did uh, an unund, some sort of matching arrangement, just to bring the the, the sort of very high impedances at the antenna feed point on the different bands down to something that wasn't too much of a mismatch for the end of the coax and I think that'll do the trick. Um, I don't do very much operating uh, above 20 meters anyway frequency wise on HF so that, that's going to be fine for what uh, for what I want. Um, but I now have three more of these rather nice, rather nice cords. And uh, what I had in mind was making a mag loop out of LDF 550 coax. Now, if any of you have seen this stuff, or if you haven't seen this stuff, this is what it looks like. It's about an inch in diameter. It's 50 ohm, uh, 50 ohm coax. It's got a corrugated solid sheath. The inner on this stuff is uh, a tube. I don't know if you can see that. It's a tubular copper tube in the middle there. And you screw the, uh, the centre pin in there. Uh, when you terminate them, <coughs> when you terminate these cables, but I can make a mag loop. So I've got a vacuum cap. I make a mag loop using LDF 550. So I can make myself a nice, a nice loop, two or three meters in diameter, and I can feed it with one of these. I can use this as a coupling transformer to it. Put a few turns through there. I know it works because I've, I've tried it on a smaller loop. Uh, I've seen this method described on the internet as well. Um, I didn't think of this up. I, uh, I saw it somewhere, and I tried it with a much smaller loop, much smaller ferrite, uh, just hanging over it like that with a few turns on it. it. Takes a bit of mucking around just to get the amount of turns right to get a 50 ohm match to it. Um, but uh, that means I can try a mag loop using uh, using the LDF 550 coaxial cable, and. Uh, uh, that should be uh, that should be quite interesting to see how that goes. Now, um, the other thing that I thought I'd do with um, the HF uh, install, as it is at the moment, is I've got. Uh, hang on, let's just get this out of the way. I can do a bit of doodling. <coughs> Excuse me, Richard Hammond, eat your heart out. This is just. A this is just too seamless for words, isn't it, really? Right, so what I thought... Hang on, let's just move that across. That around there. Let's just see where my corners are. There's one there. Because the camera's looking across the board at an angle, so it's actually the shape I've got to deal with is not an oblong. Another one there, and where are we? Another one. Good enough. Okay, so <clears throat> I thought, what uh, what have actually uh, so the nine to one uh, unun? It's one winding, two windings, three windings. There's the ground. The RF is driven across the bottom one. Remember, and this is an unun, and there is the there is the load across there. Now. <clears throat> this this would go to this would go to the auto ATU. So the auto ATU, or it would go to a coaxial cable and then back to a manual ATU in the shack, which is a bit of a fudge, but it would work. So that's the uh, HF antenna output on there. There's the ground like that. So that would go, come along there and go to that point there. Now this um, this auto ATU is a switchable L Pi match, so it can go. So the input to it, it can have different amounts of L in series. It can have different amounts of C across it, like that. That's it, that's in here. 
So this is the ground, and this is this line here. And it will rattle through and find the best match to this point here. Now, <coughs> um, being a pi or L match means it can it rattles through values of inductance, it rattles through values of capacitance here and capacitance there. It may not have a capacitor there. It can be a, a low L matching a low impedance, or it may it may not have a capacitor there. Do I get that right? Hang on. It may not have a capacitor there, <laughs> meaning the L match will match high impedances here, or it may not have a capacitor here, which and, and keep the capacitor there, which means it will match low impedances at that point to 50 ohms. Now, with this design, it doesn't, it doesn't introduce any series C. So it can't switch capacitors in series. So, because the antenna is quite long, um, it's got some inductive reactants in it. Now, Lo longer antennas tend to be inductively reactive and shorter antennas tend to be capacitively reactive. So I've got 57 metres of wire, that's quite a long antenna for um, uh, 40 metres, um, for 20 metres. Um, so it's inductively reactive and it's quite a high value of inductive reactants in there. Now because I'm changing frequencies and changing bands, I can't put a fixed value in there to, to null that, to cancel that inductance. So what I thought I'd do is, so remember this is the antenna feed point across here. So what I thought I'd do is this, I'll stick a capacitor in there. And if that capacitor is higher in value than it needs to be to cancel the inductive reactants, then it should present capacitive reactants. And the capacitive reactants can be cancelled out by series inductance. That's what I was thinking anyway. So. I'll give it a try and uh, see how it goes. Then, of course, uh, this um, this would ha I'd have my static drain choke there. This would be such a high impedance that this doesn't see it. I think I calculated it's three millihenry, and at um, one point eight megs, which is the lowest frequency, it's about thirty three k that would see across there. So the tuner's not going to see it. <laughs> Having said that, that'll be 3.3k. It might, it might try and tune that, but uh, anyway, I'll, I'll whack it in there and see what happens. It'll be 3.3k once this is uh, it's done its stuff. Divide by nine, remember. Um, be a bit higher than 33k, won't it? Be about 40k, something like that, 35k. Um, and then have the uh, the antenna feed point here. So. The uh, so yeah so that's the, so that's the idea. So a static drain choke, any, any DC gets induced into the wire, goes straight down, straight down to ground. Um, this has two purposes. Hopefully, it will get rid of any inductive reactants that's in the wire, and it will also stop any nasty spikes and stuff that the antenna might pick up from lightning or whatever coming down here and going into the automatic ATU. So that's what I got in mind, and I thought I'd this 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 is obviously a box. This is a commercial thing, so that would be that being a box like that, and there'd just be the two the two posts on the uh, the two posts on the end like that. So that's uh, that's what I've got in mind for that anyway, and uh, as I've said before many times. Uh, this is amateur radio. It's all about playing around, see what happens, uh, see if something works, see if it doesn't, see if it's an improvement, see if it's worse, and uh, see if it's uh, see if it stayed the same. So if it stayed the same, it'll come out. Remember, simplest simplest design is always the best. The less there is in it, the less there is to go wrong, and the cheaper it is to make, of course. So there we are. Uh, I hope you found that interesting, uh, as as always. Uh, many thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.